Hello, uh, in this video I'm going to look over um, Taylor's, um, scientific, Taylor's theory of scientific management and uh, explain why that links to motivation. So, um, theories of motivation should include Taylor, Maslow and Hertzberg, so we're going to look at all of them, starting off with Taylor. So, um, Taylor's uh, theory was, was about scientific uh, management. It's not strictly actually a theory about motivation and what motivates staff, but it had huge implications in particularly the early 20th century uh, kind of manufacturing firms. Um, and the idea was uh, that you could apply scientific principles um, in order to maximise organisational productivity. Now, uh, what Taylor um, endorsed was taking a really scientific approach to working out the most productive ways to produce an organisation's products. And he uh, engaged in what were called time and motion studies. What's the most efficient movement to, I don't know, make this cup of coffee? You know, where should the beans be? Where should the grinder be? Uh, you know, where should we keep the milk? How quickly can we make this cup of coffee so we maximise our... Uh, the productivity of our workers. And the idea was you, you time, uh, you break down the task, you scientifically analyse all little bits of it, you put together the correct movements uh, to make it the most efficient cup of coffee that you could possibly make, um, and then you get workers to learn those movements, repeat them all day, and be extremely productive. So, um, what does it scientific management include? A rigorous analysis of each task in the production process working out what the most efficient method is to complete each task through scientific experimentation. You then train workers to reproduce the most efficient movements and um, throughout this you can tell that Taylor was a really kind of scientific, logical, took a very logical approach, not very emotional. Um, and so Taylor's assumption, I don't think he spent a whole lot of time thinking about uh, what motivated people to be honest, but he um, kind of assumed that, that workers were log as logical as he was, everyone's as logical as him, and therefore they're going to be motivated by money. So what, what were the implications of this? Well, um, the implications were that many businesses engaged in um, these time and motion studies, whereby they, um, uh, you know, did these uh, timed each activity and, and took a kind of rigorous approach to breaking each one down. We would then um, divide, uh, have division of labour, specialisation, get a workforce, you know, really, really good at uh, engaging in a particular job. And then they would repeat that all day. Okay, the aim being that they become really good at that and become highly productive. So um, there were, you know, flow production assembly lines where you know, the Henry Ford famously used this in the Ford factory um, and workers would, I don't know, they'd be uh, screwing the bolts on the front right tyre all day, every day. They'd become really good at screwing the bolts on the front right tyre all day, every day and um, that's what they would do and everyone else would have a different like mini job in the production line. You'd have to train staff to follow instructions. Staff aren't being, you'll notice that we, we, we're training staff to follow instructions, we're not asking them to think, just turn up, do your thing, and that's it. Um, piece rate methods of payment, we'll look at piece rate, but basically you're paying workers for each thing, item they produce. Um, Taylor thought that that would be the best way to increase their productivity, motivate them to work harder. There's a need for tool hierarchies, careful supervision, management, kind of really looking over your shoulder, making sure you know what you're doing. Um, and obviously, like if you treat your workers like this, then there are going to be um, effects on employee relations. You know, if you, the management uh, there as the kind of thinkers, the workers there as the doers, uh, being supervised, yeah, that's going to have an impact on employee relations. So uh, you need to know about the value of the theory. Well, it was highly influential in 20th century manufacturing, particularly in in the West, where uh, they used a lot of these principles, um, and arguably, it, you know, um, contributed to kind of worsening industrial relations uh, between the workforce and, and, and management. Um, however, Taylor was an engineer and not a psychologist, 
like I said, I don't think, you know, he either ignored or didn't particularly consider the psychological implications of his findings. Um, and, you know, didn't consider that, that, you know, some people may well be motivated by money, um, but other people will have other, you know, but most people aren't that one dimensional. Yes, they're motivated by money, but may well uh, want responsibility, decision making, creativity, etc. Uh, and um, Taylor's theory didn't really allow for that. So um, Taylor's the first of our theorists, he's the earliest one uh, as well. And um, uh, yeah, that's scientific management.